All right, history lesson. Once upon a time, I flew Dow Props because a little more than two years ago, Dow Prop was probably one of the best props out on the market. Now, shortly after I caught on and decided that I wanted to fly Dow Props um, and that I was going to stick with them, Racecraft, I believe, became a big player. Now, I didn't jump on the Racecraft bandwagon because at the time their props were going for like $3.50, $4 a pack, and you know, Dow Prop was still sitting at the $3 mark. Sometimes you catch sales, get them for you know, $2 a pack. So I stocked up and I flew Dow Props until that winter when, quite frankly, my props started breaking left and right anytime. I even thought about hitting something. No matter how small, how light it was, didn't matter, props broke. So I started searching. The racecraft kick was still going on, but HQ Prop had entered the market and they were really putting out a good prop. So much so that Mr. Steele caught on and committed to flying the 5 by 43 point the 5 by 4.3 by 3 V1Ss. So, I gave them a shot and sure enough fell in love. And I ran those very, very consistently, um, very reliably, until just a couple months ago when, you know, it pays to evaluate all the new things that are coming out on the market just to make sure you're not missing something. Now, about this time, the Watermelon S3 props had just hit market. But knowing that their pitch was at a 3.1 at the time, I was still running 2300 kV motors. Um, you know, I didn't jump on them. I just kind of stuck with things that I knew were 4S low kV friendly. So I was flying the Gemfan Wind Dancer 5042s. Uh, when they came out later, I tried the Gemfan Wind Dancer 5043s. I did finally try out some race crafts. Um, wasn't real impressed. And. Began to cycle through Dow Prop and the different gem fan offerings again, and then something really caught my eye. So that's what this is all about, guys. Props. I mean, it's a small thing. They are probably the cheapest thing you're going to put on your quad. They are also the most likely thing you have to tear up. They are probably as much as tune one of the things that can contribute or detract from a nice smooth flight. Based on the props characteristics, your motor's characteristics, what ESCs you're running, your overall weight, just there's lots of factors that come down to the prop being one of those things that can really pull your build together. And I got to experience this myself for the first time with these Johnny props. I am in love with these Johnny props. And so I want to spend a little time talking about what I have been able to put together myself. Now, what I'm presenting isn't science, it's just experience. Um, some things that I've been through, some of the recent props that I flew, and why I was changing, and so on and so forth. So, let's hop back a step to these HQ Prop 5x4.3x3s. Three now, this is the V1S. So, these definitely have some give, especially, you know, as the prop is, you know, let me do it here. As the prop is out towards its middle, you can see it bends and flexes pretty evenly. You know, it has the same amount of give all the way across. Now, having a little bit of this softness does dampen some of your moves. Uh, you know, when you're making harsh movements and all, and that can help. Some of the other features of this prop that I really, really like are the fact that there's no winglets, there's no sharp edges that are going to get knocked off here because I'm going to be honest, the Gemfan Wind Dancers, when I was flying them, I liked the way they felt until you tapped something and that winglet came off. Just those little sharp winglets, because they're so easy to knock off, they're the first thing that's going to throw your prop out of balance and start causing vibrations. So, yeah, they flew good, but I need them to stand up to a little bit more than a leaf. So, you know, that's why I came back to these. 
Um, as far as the softness, now I don't have any to demonstrate in my bag because once again I'm in a hotel. But they were a little softer on the outside edges, maybe slightly, well, just about as stiff in the middle. But they had a little more give out here. And that's probably part of what contributed to that nice soft feeling. Now, the next gem fan iteration um, that really caught my eye because after the wind dancers and discovering what I did you know never having had to think about the little winglets before because even though the Dow props had those sharp points they weren't super fragile winglets so was the gem fan hurricane 51 466 things get even harder to pronounce that right there Freaking battery dying, just had to stop right in the middle of that so I could swap batteries. So anyway, the Hurricanes don't have those winglets, okay? They don't have any real sharp edges. So, again, that really comes in for durability. Um, if you can picture this, you know, when these hit and strike something, they have a good edge to stand up to it, even out here along the tips. They're able to take quite a bit of beating and not get whacked too far out of balance as far as because it's missing pieces. These, as I was running them, I come to find that they kind of share those same properties. Now, as far as the way it bends and flexes, they're stiffer in the middle and not so much out on the ends. But they're no less stiff than the HQs are out at the tip. You can just see that they hold up more in the middle though. They don't have that even bend all the way across. They really only bend at the outside. So these I thought were gonna be a pretty close replacement. I, I honestly was expecting to like these more than I did. Now I'm gonna share. I think that has a lot to do with my motor choice. So I started flying high KV motors when I rebuilt this platform. All right, these are on here, Fly Woo Nins, uh, running at 2750 KV, and these here are the iFlight Shings, running at 2750 KV. Slight small tangent, the motors are produced by the same manufacturer and actually have a lot of the same features built into them, so as far as I'm concerned, they are cloned motors, all right? Now, on a high KV setup, one of the first things that happened when I was flying these HQs, even though they have a pretty, you know, non-aggressive 4.3 pitch, they were poppier. They were they were poppier than I wanted. Um, they just had more more throttle response, and then than I really wanted. And in order to tame that, I had to set a throttle limit. And I had to really get used training myself, kind of working off that throttle limit a little bit, or at least attempting to train myself, you know, to relearn all that muscle memory that I had been learning as far as where to throw the throttle when and so on and so forth. With these, I had a little bit more response than these. But again, it's a 4.3 pitch. These are a 4.6 pitch. So not really thinking didn't put the two together before I bought them, wasn't quite what I was looking for. So after I started thinking about it, after I got these and I'm like, man, they still just, they got too much, too much response. Like I want a little less response, a little more control, but the control is more of a byproduct of that lesser response, okay? I don't need the pop. So on a whim, I bought these. Now, these do the opposite of what most manufacturers have been doing. These are the Azure Power Johnny Prop. All right, these are five inch diameter, 4.3 pitch. These are 5.1 diameter, 4.6 pitch. However, the Azure Prop is a 4.8 diameter. So they actually made the prop smaller than five inches. Now, as I thought about that, I thought, you know, this might be what I'm looking for, at least in that direction. There is less prop to react to my motors. All right? Now, when you look at the characteristics, this shares a lot of characteristics as far as the bend and flex as the HQ prop. 
except it has a little bit less flex on that outside, okay? The middle, on the contrary, is quite stiff. It is stiffer than the HQ props and definitely stiffer um, than the gem fans. So that really caught my eye. As I noticed this, you know, I'm just kind of looking them over, looking for the little things, right? I never flown Azure props before, and so I'm looking at this curve, and I'm like, what could that possibly do? And I'm going to tell you the biggest thing I've noticed it's done. So if you can picture this, this prop here, I mean, yes, it's got a little bit of leading edge curve, but when it hits something, it's there's not much to deflect. So it's either going to go through it, or it's going to put a lot more pressure on the object it's striking. It's going to tear up that front edge. This prop is even less rounded and when it hits something it deforms it chips everything else now don't get me wrong both of these have good durability but i don't think either of them is great what i have found the more and more that i fly these azure power johnny props is that their durability is fantastic this is part in due to this curve all right if you take a look at these other props, get these turned, there we go. Take a look at these other props. You're going to see that this has a really nice scoop here. Now the reason I say really nice, as this hits something, it's going to leave deformation. It's not necessarily going to be able to push and deflect around the object. Same with these, right? Good old trusty HQ props. But these, I find that this leading edge doesn't hardly ever get torn up from branch strikes, head on prop and tr or prop, head on uh, branch strikes, um, trunk strikes, like you name it, these things come out unscathed unless you really tear into something. Put that together with the fact that it does have some beef to it, okay? But it's got enough give on that outward edge that it does move a little. And whatever they're made of is a good formula. Now, like I said, there's no science in this. This is not me tearing this thing apart on some small level and proving to you that the durability is this, that, or something other based on science. This is all my experience, all right? Why do I love these props? I love these props because coupled with 2750KV motors on 4S, they are efficient, they are not too aggressive, so they are giving me the response I want and the grip I want in the air without being overly grippy. They, they definitely have a softness, but they glide and they stick without it being too harsh. And then you throw in the durability on top of it, and this right here is a winning formula every time for me. Now I'm gonna back this up, showing you some flight footage of me flying, same day, same tune, same quad, but you will be able to see the difference in prop wash handling just by changing props. <laughs>
Now, I'm not always the best at making sure I'm applying the throttle at the right time. And so you're gonna see even with these here and there, prop wash comes out, but it's nowhere near as often. And when it happens, it's not as harsh. So Azure Power, as I get rid of these other things, there's gonna be a lot more of these coming my way. These are by far the best props I have ever flown on this current build. Thank you. And to the rest of you guys, I just wanted to share that because really to have an opinion about these things, you have to try them. And in my mind, you have to try them, you know, more than one or two packs. I've been running these for weeks, switching between these three props, but not every flight. I'll fly the HQ prop for a week. I'll fly the gym fans for a week. I'll fly these for a week. I'll do tuning and just general playing around with these. Do the same with these do it again with these and i just have been through those cycles for the last three or four weeks with at least three or four days on each prop doing multiple different things in multiple weather conditions at multiple elevations so on and so forth and these are giving the me the most consistently best flights of any prop i've run in a long time so that's all guys. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll consider giving these things a shot, at least sharing with me your own opinions on the matter. As always, fly safe, be smart, and happy crashing.